the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Lance Storm joining us here today as a special guest host. Mike Sempervivi got himself suspended. And Lance has helped arrange a very special interview today with a uh, with a, uh, a despicable... Well, I shouldn't say that. Don Callis is joining us here today. Don, how are you doing? Good. I'm glad that uh, I had several riders in my contract to do this, and one of them was that Sempervivi underneath talent extraordinaire would not be allowed to interview me well he uh he got himself in trouble so you don't have to worry about that here today uh mr callis but man we got a lot to get into there's a big show coming up this weekend and uh your main man kenny omega is going to be fighting for the impact wrestling heavyweight championship held by rich swan champion versus champion match tell us about this battle coming up on sunday well uh, I can tell you this, uh, it's unprecedented, and it's uh, one more example of uh, the invisible hand, Don Callis, changing the wrestling industry. I've done it now arguably three times, once with the Tokyo Dome match with Jericho and Omega, uh, once when I came here and Kenny and I won the AW World title, and then uh, most recently when I reformed the Elite, which is what everybody's talking about now, bigger, better, stronger than it's ever been bigger than the horsemen, bigger than the NWO, comparing the new elite to, the, to either of those groups is not even apples to oranges, it's apples to insects. Now, obviously, you've got, uh, you've got two titles on the line here, and uh, there was an advertisement on uh, AEW Wrestling last night. There was a commercial, although it has not been heavily promoted on the actual show itself. Is this a, is this a Tony Khan call, this despicable Don Callis? We cannot allow him to promote his match here on our show. Sorry, could you repeat that question? <laughs> the the promotion of this match we've got commercials airing on the AEW show on Wednesday but uh, not a lot of promotion on the actual show is this a Tony Khan call you know what I think that uh, I think that when you revolutionize the business as I've done consistently some people don't, don't even always get on the bandwagon Brian you know that so uh, I'm not worried about it because I don't concern myself with things like buy rates and ratings I concern myself with history and 30 years from now uh, when uh, Meltzer's in a, in a sanitarium and, and you're running this thing, you'll still be talking about that other time that Don Callis and Kenny Omega changed the wrestling business. Now, this seems to be a, a uh, I guess we could talk rest about the uh, Impact Wrestling pay-per-view before we go on. So uh, tell us the top matches for this show. What are you looking forward to besides Kenny Omega winning the championship? Well, and, and, and I think that it's interesting because I think Rich Swan is a tremendous talent, and, and I don't know that it's a foregone conclusion for any of these matches. I think Kenny, Kenny Omega is going to be, have his toughest challenge against Rich Swan. but when you talk about some of the other matches, I mean, I love the Good Brothers versus Pin Juice. That's very cool. That's got that interpromotional element to it that a lot of people really like, and I think it's very cool. And so I'm looking forward to that, and I'm also looking forward to the X Division match as you know i am a huge huge uh ace austin guy lance knows this uh i think ace austin is the future of impact wrestling so i'm very excited for that i'm excited for gianna perrazzo and Tanil dashwood there's just so much stuff that's happening that i think is very exciting with this particular pay-per-view it's going to be awesome as mean gene used to say on awa television don't you dare miss it I think it's really cool that, you know, in addition to the main event, which is obviously huge, you've got the, you know, the unified champion in Rich Swan, you've got Kenny Omega, the AEW champion, but you've got also, you know, the New Japan tag team of Finjuice fighting the Good Brothers. And the fact that you have New Japan represented on this show, Impact Wrestling represented on the show, and AEW represented on this show, it really makes this pay per view something special that. You know, you're not just getting Impact Wrestling. You're getting the best from three different companies. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think that that's why this is a, uh, a linchpin uh, sort of a pay-per-view uh, in the wrestling yeah. business because you're seeing things you won't see anywhere else. And, and I'll give credit to Scott Demore and to Ed Nordholm, Len Asper, Tony Khan, the other people that are all involved with this. It's like you have to have an open mind. I mean, I'm a guy that thinks outside the box. I'm a guy that thinks about concepts that change entire industries. 
But then you have to have people that also are like-minded that go, yeah, let's break down the traditional paradigms of pro wrestling and, and, and let's try to do something different. And you know who benefits? All of the insect fans, Lance. That's who benefits. And guys like you and Brian who get to make money off of my history-changing ideas by talking about it. Now, you have had a, a lengthy career, as, uh, as Lance can also attest, and you've been all over, and you've done all sorts of different things. And, of course, in the, in the middle of this career, you, you went away for a while, and you, uh, you returned to public service, however you want to term it, and then you have made your return here okay. over the last several years. Would you say that this period is the favorite, your personal favorite period that you've worked in this business or would that have been some other period during your career? First of all, I consider I'm still doing a public service, Brian, uh, through what I'm doing. Because what did a lot of people say about this business, about this industry? It's boring. There's no choice. We know what's going to happen. It's this, it's that. Guess what? Tokyo Dome, I changed all of that with Jericho versus Omega. And now I've changed it again by breaking down the political walls between companies. So... Is it my favorite time? Unlike you and Lance, I have something totally not in common with you. I don't like the wrestling business. I can't stand it. I don't like the business. I don't like the people in it. I don't like the people who watch it. They truly, when I call the fans insects, it's really not meant as an insult or something to get quote-unquote heat. I'm not Andy Kaufman here trying to get heat all the time. I'm simply saying as I see it, um, I don't like this business. Neither does Kenny Omega. Neither one of us likes wrestling. It just happens to be that this industry is the platform for change that we are a part of. So do I like it? I like the fact right now with the business that it is in a state that Kenny Omega could, and I could finally execute our history-changing plan that we've had for 27 years since he was a 10-year-old boy in Winnipeg. And the business was right for the change. I went away. I was waiting. I played the long game, Brian. Now, when you look back at your career, I can understand uh, the dislike of, of the current wrestling business. Was there ever a period where you loved the wrestling business? <clears throat> oh, no. It's got nothing to do with the style now or anything like that. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a detestable business that I never enjoyed being a part of. It just happened, and Kenny Omega and I have this in common. We're just so good at it that it, and it's so easy for us so easy for kenny omega to shatter the old dave Meltzer five-star rating bs that that has been propagated for many years it's so easy kenny omega has a five-star match falling out of bed in the morning it's a joke for him uh people called me the greatest color commentator for jesse ventura commentary is a joke for me it's so easy and it's so easy to pull the strings and be the invisible hand and quote-unquote manipulate things behind the scenes. I have five-star ideas every day. Kenny has five-star matches without thinking about it. I never liked the business the way the business was run or the people in the business. It just happens to be a platform. Now, when you talk about the fans being detestable... <laughs> Do you take a certain joy in Kenny Omega getting, for example, a seven-star rating, and then the fans just get outraged and furious that the five-star scale has been broken? Do you take a special glee in that fury? <clears throat> I, I, I take a special glee that, you know, Dave Meltzer probably is not a guy who enjoys any kind of change in his life. I can imagine every minute is micromanaged. I, I like the fact that he had to change his scale, which was a ludicrous thing, a subjective scale to begin with. But what I like is that that scale change is exactly indicative and a great example of what Kenny Omega and I do every day. We take you to a next level of consciousness. We take you outside the box of traditional thinking. This could never happen in wrestling. And then the invisible hand of Kenny Omega do exactly that thing that you thought could never happen. We'll never see anything like this again, Lance and Brian. And then we show it to you. So we just reformed the elite. This is the greatest assemblance of talent. This is the greatest quote unquote stable of the last 30 years. This is way bigger and better than the NWO. You can't compare Hall and Nash to the Young Bucks or, or the Good Brothers. You can't compare Hulk Hogan to Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is the most talented person physically and intellectually and spiritually in the history of this organization. 
comparing us to the NWO is not apples to oranges. It's apples to dog turds, to be t- totally honest about it. So now we've reformed the elite, the biggest thing in pro wrestling. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. So the insect fans can sit there and scurry around, which is what insects do, and be dazzled. Don't try to figure it out because we're 10 steps ahead. We always are. Okay, with that said, is there a plan B should Kenny Omega lose to Rich Swan? No one thought Rich Swan was going to defeat Moose, a much bigger, stronger opponent, when he unified the TNA and the Impact titles. Is there a plan B in the Invisible Hand's mind, or are you so confident that Kenny Omega's winning this thing that should he not, you're going to be at a loss. Well, actually, Don, hold that thought. I'll give you through the break to think about it, because we have to head to a commercial break here. Back in a moment to pay the bills, Wrestling Observer Live. Lance Storm joining us as co-host today. The Invisible and Hand, Don Callis. Brian, us. was that intro music from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five? Is it, that what I heard? It might have been, yes. That's fantastic. I was an early adopter. Uh, really? Impact oh, Wrestling. Yeah. Their rebellion Let's paper. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we got. I got a couple of questions after you get to Lance here. But April twenty fifth, that's coming Sunday. Rich Swan, Kenny Omega for the AEW and Impact World Titles is the main event. Finn Juice defends the tag team titles against the Good Brothers, and more. And before the break, Lance was asking you. Lance was asking you if you have a plan B if Kenny Omega fails. That was his question. <laughs> Well, I, I don't like to look at things from a negative perspective. That's why I'm next level consciousness. I am like the wrestling version of the Dalai Lama, as we know. I don't only have a plan B, I have a plan X, Y, Z. There's always a new plan. And look, this is, I work for Impact Wrestling. So if Rich Swan wins the AEW world title, it's not exactly a terrible thing for Don Callis, the EVP of Impact Wrestling. I'm just, it's a win, win, win for everyone here. Because what you've got is title versus title. I grew up with Nick Bockwinkle as my world champion. When Ric Flair came to town, it was title versus title. It was the biggest thing I'd ever seen as a wrestling fan. This is the sort of stuff that people said could never happen in pro wrestling. You're welcome, by the way. And we are going to see at Rebellion this Sunday, April 25th, we are going to see a world champion from one company versus a world champion from another company. Someone's leaving with two belts. Lance Storm, you've been a big mark for many years. When was the last time you ever saw a champion from one company versus a champion from another company where there was a definitive winner and someone left with two belts. Have you ever seen that Lance Storm? Not that I can remember. I honestly can say I, I, I don't recall ever seeing that happen. So this Sunday will be a first. And, and that was a big thing. Um, impact last week, Tony Khan was at the press conference and he said that he's going to have officials there and someone was leaving a definitive winner with both belts. God bless Tony Khan. God bless Scott Demore. God bless everyone. But here's the deal. Impact tonight on Access TV. It's Thursday night, baby. It's the biggest night of the week, and we're going to see it tonight on Impact. On Access TV, there's going to be some very interesting things. You're going to get some words of wisdom dropped by the invisible hand on Callus, by Kenny Omega, by Rich Swan. This is going to be huge, and the great thing is I'm very happy for Rich Swan. Rich Swan is a once-in-a-decade talent who's getting to show how great he always was through the platform of Impact Wrestling. The problem, Kenny Omega is a once-in-2,000-year talent. That's the problem for Rich Swan, and that physically Rich Swan can match up to Kenny Omega. The problem is it's a head game, brother. This is a guy who has been arguably, undisputedly actually, the best wrestler in the world for five years. You know, That's it's a big interesting. head trip for Rich Swan. You know, it's interesting when you talk about Tony Khan. It is, it is. If you watch the the show, the Impact Wrestling show, and you see some of the paid advertisements by Tony Khan, Tony Khan uh-huh. can be very derogatory towards Impact Wrestling. However, in this particular match, he has to be rooting for you and Kenny Omega. He can't be rooting to lose the the AEW championship to Impact Wrestling. So it's very, very interesting that he is now in this position where he's gone from having to belittle your company to have to support yes. your company. Actually, support you! Well, history makes strange bedfellows, gentlemen. And this is where I say when people like Lance with very limited intellects, no offense to you personally, Lance, are talking about a plan B, I'm on a plan algebraic formula. 
In other words, isn't it interesting how all the pieces come to play? And, Brian, you just pointed something out that not a lot of people have even thought about. I thought about it. Tony Khan has now become an ally of Don Callis and Kenny Omega. Isn't it interesting how when the history gets written, people change sides and allegiances, and there are so many pieces on this chessboard that are going to play out on Sunday that people are going to be talking about this for years, if not decades to come. Meltzer's going to finally be able to retire. He's going to make so much money off of what I have done and what Kenny Omega has done and Impact Wrestling and AEW and this whole scenario. Meltzer will finally be able to retire. It's going to be good. Then you'll be in charge, Dude, Brian, this, which will this be much guy, better for everybody. Hey, listen, if this guy hasn't retired after watching all these recent Raw episodes, I mean, it ain't gonna, it's never going to happen, buddy. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> He'll be here till the end. Now, last night on this uh, Dynamite show, these two yes. crazy guys... Uh, they rammed your uh, your elite trailer. They got out of there with weapons. They started smashing the windows in, and uh, you guys had vanished. What happened? Well, you know, Brian, I'm someone who abhors violent or any human physical contact. So these are exactly what I talked earlier about, how I hate the wrestling business and how I don't like the people that are involved in professional wrestling. In my mind, I'm picturing Eddie Kingston and John Moxley. These are two barbarians who only understand one thing, this sort of base level violence. And I have no interest in being a part of that. It's one of the things I don't like about being involved in professional wrestling. So basically what you're talking about is a couple of hooligans. If this had happened on the street, I would be calling the police. But because it's wrestling, it's okay somehow. So this is a real problem. So it's, it's, it's been very difficult. Now, I do not expect you to necessarily tell us any future plans, but, I mean, you talked about uh, enemies becoming allies, and uh, John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, very, very talented guys, a lot of very talented folks in uh, in AEW. Do you have, I'm sure, as you noted, you got a plan X, Y, Z. I mean, is, is, a, is a further recruitment in your future, or are you happy with the crew that you have currently amassed? You know, life changes all the time, Brian Alvarez, and I'm expecting more changes to come. That's all I'm going to tell you. Deanna Parazzo and Tennille Dashwood are fighting for the Impact Knockouts title. And uh, tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on this match. I think Deanna is a phenomenal wrestler. I think that she's been the top uh, female performer knockout uh, in the entire industry. And I think Tennille Dashwood, who's a Lance Storm trainee, won't hold that against her. I think she's someone who's going to have a lot of success. So I, I'm, I'm very excited about that matchup because it's another one of those ones where you really don't know what's going to happen. Now, earlier you mentioned Ace Austin, and you, you spoke about what a, a personal fan you were of his. Which, by the way, when you, talk about, when you talk to a guy who hates wrestling, but he's actually a fan of a wrestler who's not Kenny Omega, that's really saying something. So what is it about Ace, Ace Austin that, uh, that is so impressive to you? To me, Ace Austin is like Rob Van Dam in ECW. Phenomenal lower body strength, freaky athlete. When Ace Austin's brain grows into his body, Ace Austin will dominate Impact Wrestling. That's my honest opinion. And uh, I'm just I'm talking about a guy who's 24 years old and can literally do anything. That's Ace Austin. I'm looking forward to a bright future for him. Now, I know that uh, there must be a humble bone somewhere in your body, Don. No. As you look back on all of the ways that you have changed the business of pro wrestling, can you yep. humbly at any point state that there was anything that you accomplished where you actually were surprised that you managed to pull this one off? Uh, I got a hot comeback at a Lance Storm once in a match. <laughs> wow. I was, shocked at, I was shocked at that. He showed some good fire. No, I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, everything that I do in the industry is, is, is planned. It's planned several steps. It's not something that's just happenstance. So, you know, the, the, the plan with Kenny and the AEW title was 27 years in the making. So when you plan things and you have the patience and you have the ability to dream big, many people dream small, then you're never surprised. 
because there's always an outcome and there's a plan X, Y, and Z, not just a plan B. Sure, but but when you think about, okay, you've got a plan A and you've got a plan all the way to X, Y, Z, there has to be, by by saying that, you're saying that sometimes i got a plan A and, well, you know, maybe maybe it will, maybe it won't, i got a plan B, et cetera, et cetera. So that means that at some point there, you have to have a, an element of surprise where, like, I've got a plan A and, well, I'm probably going to have to go to plan B, but then suddenly plan A works, and you're like, wow, I pulled that one off. Like the, the Jericho uh, working the Tokyo Dome, for example. Uh, clearly- I think that I think I had no doubt that if the three of us could put it together, we would change the entire landscape of the business. My doubt, I guess, and, and the area for surprise was, Chris had always told me I'll never work for anyone other than Vince McMahon. So that phone call when I was in Tokyo at the Tokyo Dome Hotel and I called Jericho with that idea, my doubt was not what we could accomplish. It's whether Chris could get to that next level of consciousness where he would say, I'm going to do the one thing I said I would never do, and that's work for somebody else. So I will say that was a surprise, as was never getting thanked for that. <laughs> okay, but Not in by that... Chris, but by companies. <laughs> In that same vein, I think what Brian may be asking is, what accomplishment, what invisible hand accomplishment that you've had that you had to pull the most strings to actually pull off? Like, what did you think was your biggest coup? I think we're still living it right now, but I think it all started uh, Christmas 2019 when I called Kenny Omega and I said, that idea we've been talking about loosely for the last 27 years, I think the timing is finally right. And I think this is how it's going to play out. Uh, so getting an Impact Wrestling executive onto a Dynamite into a world title match for another company required the most, to use your a vernacular lance, string pulling of anything I've ever accomplished. There's so many moving pieces. Tony Khan is a brilliant guy with a 165 IQ He's a guy with infinite resources. He didn't need to do any of this. So we needed to pull some strings. Scott Demore and Ed Nornholm were very open, open-minded to these things. But there's still work that had to be done behind the scenes. And then Kenny Omega, you know, people say, well, does Kenny need someone by his side? Kenny and I have always been by each other's side. So this has required, this last project, I would say, has required the most string pulling, as did bringing the Bucks back into the fold. Because the Young Bucks and Kenny were estranged. There's no question. There was a lot of uh, grief in between all of them. And what I do is I put families back together, Lance. You know that. So that's what I've done. That required a lot of work. But that was pro bono work. That was work from the heart. Now, putting families back together, whatever you think of these wrestling fans, the wrestling fans consider themselves a family. And if you look around, there are a lot of wrestling promotions that are slowly starting to hint that at this time, at this time, we're going to start bringing back fans. We're going to start bringing back fans. As, uh, as an executive at Impact Wrestling, is there anything you can tell us about plans to maybe at some point start allowing fans back into the buildings? I'd be happy if fans never left their homes again because I don't like interacting with them. So I have no comments on that whatsoever. Mm. But, I mean, how much do you have to interact with these fans? I mean, if they if they come into your building, Don, that is uh, r- generating revenue for your promotion. So that should be somewhere on your list of accomplishments. I believe that they should all be living behind a fence. So I'm not even sure. I mean, uh, I, I don't – you know, here's the thing, Brian. I'm too busy thinking about history-changing moments to think about the day-to-day – vagaries of the professional wrestling business like fans merchandise ratings so I, I i just it's not something i ever think about i don't think about the fans the fans are an annoyance it's like you go in your yard and you have a an anthill it's something you have to either avoid or get rid of it's not something you think about how to make the ants lives better let's get these ants off your lawn pretty much I can understand that. Well, listen, hey, stick around, Don, back in a moment. uh, Plug this pay-per-view, Wrestling Observer Live. Lance Storm. Don Callis joining us here today. You're not such a bad guy, Don. I don't know what people are talking about. But tell us about this uh, this pay-per-view coming up here on Sunday, the Rebellion pay-per-view. Lots of big matches. Floor's yours. I am super pumped about Rebellion. 
I am super pumped about everything associated with it. This is a history-making night for Impact Wrestling, for AEW, and I guess for all of the Insect Wrestling fans out there. Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega, champion versus champion. Guys, there will be a winner, and that's going to be very exciting. Tony Khan said it. Scott Demore said it. This is going to be great. Uh, you're going to have New Japan versus Ada, or versus Impact, rather, uh, uh, when you've got the Good Brothers versus Finn Juice. That's going to be super cool. Lance referenced that. Uh, we're going to have a tremendous X Division match. We talked about Ace Austin. We're going to have Celebration, which is the online virtual fan fest, which is fantastic. That's going to be very exciting. So uh, I'm super pumped about it. I'm super pumped about Deanna Perrazzo versus Tennille Dashwood and every other match, top to bottom. As Mean Gene used to say, don't you dare miss it. Don't you dare miss it, everybody. Don't forget, tonight you can check out Impact Wrestling as well. And uh, Don, I want to wish you and uh, Kenny Omega the best of luck, whether you need it or not, for this coming Sunday. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon as the as the man behind a multi-champion, the belt collector, Kenny Omega. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. And, of course, thanks, Lance. I want to thank you for doing the show here today. Excellent job filling in for Mike Sempervivi. And uh, for all of you wondering, hey, when's gonna when's Mike going to be back? When's his suspension? When will it be lifted? I can just tell you that he'll be back in a jiffy. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.